I am Justin Benson. And I'm Aaron Moorhead. And we are the makers of Resolution. And, and welcome, welcome to, to SciFiUniverse.com. I think it wants a story. It's like a little story. Yes. Uh, yeah, we, we've developed uh, as an art the ability to talk about resolution without spoiling it, but it was very difficult at first. We, uh, we mostly found a way around it. Yeah, we, we mostly just, just avoid questions with bad jokes. Yeah, honestly, if someone, then, if someone asks a question we can't answer, we just kind of make a <laughs> stupid joke. And then girls and then are they, and then they, usually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they just kind of wait, wait for the real answer. They're like, that's funny. And they wait for the real answer, and it doesn't, it doesn't come. And then, and then we ask them a question. <laughs> <laughs> On a, on a serious note, I think our our party line, which is very sincere and true, is that we really never discussed what genre resolution is in. And when the press came out that it was genre bending, it was quite a nice surprise. We had no idea. Uh, there are several um, sources of inspiration from the film. It was conceived in several different ways. But, uh, choosing one and keeping it brief, it takes place in a cabin in the woods, right? And there is a long tradition in cinema of really wonderful movies that feature a cabin in the woods. Whether it's Cabin Fever, whether it's Evil Dead 2, whether it's Cabin in the Woods. And um, in those movies, uh, there is typically a group of people, young people, going out to a cabin in the woods, and there's a bunch of hot girls with them. They're gonna drink, and it's wonderful. So much and fun. I love that universe. And those are there's so many great movies. Uh, the thing is, is where I grew up in Southern California, nobody does that. The only reason I've ever heard of anyone going to a cabin in the woods is what, Aaron? <laughs> <laughs> it's to uh, shoot guns. <laughs> Um, do drugs right. and avoid paying your taxes. Yes, <laughs> that is that is my experience. So that I think that the story was conceived partially from that idea. The other thing was that Aaron and I had worked together on a low budget commercial that starred the two leads, and they had great chemistry. We all had great chemistry together. The ad turned out especially well, and so um, we had a cabin. <laughs> we had the cast. We had each other, and. Uh, Damn. Small amount of money. A small amount of money. Yeah. And uh, and those are the resources we had. And then so we told the best story we could with, with that. <laughs> Given the geography of the area, like a anywhere in Southern California, if you go roughly 40 or 50 miles from the coast, there, there's typically uh, Native American Indian reservations. I've never seen that location used in a movie. When it's a cabin in the woods, it's always like, oh, the woods in Virginia. You know, the, mm -hmm. this is, it's, it, but in this movie, I, I wanted it to actually take place in- The in crackhead boonies. The crackhead boonies of San Diego, San Diego, California. And you can't do that without including the Native American Indian Reservation stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I never told you this story. This one time, uh, I, was, I was out getting drunk with some friends when I was about 15 years old. At a, at a Indian reservation campground, and some of my friends got into a big fight with you did with a neighboring story. campground, mm -hmm. and uh, and as we were leaving the reservation the next morning, the uh, the guard, the guy at the the exit to the campground, said that if tribal security had been there that night, that they would have been able to do anything they wanted to us, and that you know they essentially would have beat us up into oblivion. <laughs> and I was not part of that fight. Uh, so, but, yeah. but <laughs> I would have been dragged out of my tent by tribal security and probably beat within an inch of my life. Yeah. So that's that's probably uh, where the idea came from. The reason that it is the way it is in the film is uh, is just a tonal uh, it's it's for the tone, for for feeling, you know, the way that they were, and also just a good story reason to uh, uh, to have uh, what I guess the the writers would call a ticking clock, you know, is is got to get out of the cabin, you know. Um, it was the ticking clock. Yeah, yeah. 
that's pretty much it. Yeah, it introduces some tension into the story. And mm -hmm. I, I do agree with you too. I, I don't, I think that unfortunately, uh, Native American reservations typically aren't too nice of, of places. They're Obviously, awesome they got, in Florida. Well, in, in Southern California, I mean, you <laughs> see them, I, I think they, I would say, yeah, I mean, they, they got a really, 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 I mean, how do you even get into it? It's awful. <laughs> what, <Yeah. laughs> what happened to right, right, right. Native Americans in America? But that being said, there was no intended um, political message in the film at all. Mm. It's uh, honestly we didn't. In terms of that, I don't think there's. Uh, it's not really a balance as much as it is kind of whenever we felt like it. <laughs> you know, would you agree with that? And there, there was not. Where there wasn't really a, a very like careful play between. You know, now we make him laugh. Now we make him cry. Besides, like when, when felt appropriate. You know. Yeah. I. I Obviously, humor is always a really effective thing in, in deflating a dramatic moment. And I feel like there's a lot of places in Resolution where we take you right to the edge of where it could become heavy-handed melodrama, but then we stick that joke in there. And it, and I think that it, A, uh, makes it so Aaron and I can watch it without cringing and being like, oh my god, I hope they don't think we're airing something out here. Yeah. And, then, and then B, it's it's just effective storytelling. I mean, in real life, there's humor in, in almost almost everything, mm -hmm. and and I do think that in, in telling every all the different threads of humor and drama and and creepy scary stuff, they all complement each other. And I I think that when you can make those three components work together, they they all it, they all benefit. There's like a symbiotic relationship. Like a story. The supernatural stuff, the scary stuff, the fantastic stuff, it works better with with a good character drama and some good humor. And my theory on that is that if you can engage your audience with the character drama stuff and you can get them really interested in what's happening with the characters and they're rooting for them and they care about them, that they have less time to deconstruct the supernatural scary stuff and thus it is more effective. Mm. That's the so yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, they're all they're all important. The 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 friendship and the uh, yeah, no, it's all it, it's it's all connected to the supernatural stuff as well. Mm -hmm. uh, well there there's a uh, I mean we, we try to not get too metaphorical with the movie, honestly. We, we like to think of it pretty much right on the surface, but there is, of course, you know, the, you know, he's chained to the wall literally, and he's literally addicted to drugs, you know, uh, or he's figuratively chained to drugs. Um, and if, if you were to put a word about what the movie's about, it is about controlling things, you know, so being able to, being able to, to the, the, um, chaining somebody up would, is is um, Michael's method method of controlling Chris, and uh, and that's actually why he's you know in a, a strange morally gray area because he is uh, imposing his will on someone that does not want it for you know no reason for relatively ambiguous reasons until later on in the film. You know that's what the movie is about. If you do get into theme. But we try to make it more about how much fun the movie is to watch right there on the surface. So. We had to at one point. We were like, "What if someone asks about what the theme of the movie is?" Yeah, that control, <laughs> control. <laughs> it's totally about control. <laughs> it's a chaining of the destiny, chaining of the woman, the the hero chaining the woman. Mm -hmm. It's fun to also uh, uh, all time uh, in the uh, in the wife. Yeah. Uh, chinning uh, in the drug, chinning. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a very uh, and the the antagonist of the film, mm. uh, the antagonist of the film itself is also uh, actually the, that's a, a that's a good French word en français. Um, but yeah, to, to keep them contained, you know, uh, it's pretty. It's it's good actually. Yeah, it's nice. Everybody's kind of doing their own little piece of that. We're gonna use that. Yeah, we're gonna use that. We say there's a thank you French. Merci. Yeah, <laughs>
anything that was uh, anything that was going to be an issue in terms of how we were going to make decisions on set, uh, we resolved beforehand. We made sure that that we had the answers that we would need right then and there, except for technical, small technical details. Um, because, uh, I mean, sets do need solid direction from, from one place, more or less. They need, you know, it's got to come, not just the actors, but everybody. Um, so otherwise, we more or less split up the uh, duties of one person between two. It wasn't that we were both making decisions and clashing and trying to figure it out, you know? Um, all of that was... Uh, more or less taken care of when we were preparing for the film. Would you agree with that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we rehearsed the movie for several months beforehand with the actors. So, by the time, by the time Aaron was strapped to a big ass camera, <laughs> uh, a lot of the performance adjustments had already been made, and we'd already decided on certain things. So, not certain things. We'd already decided on pretty much everything. Yeah. Uh, so no, no, it's like the two of us working together. It's it's about as harmonious as it could possibly be. It it seems like it's a hard thing to even understand. But you know, the job of a director is a hard thing for I think most people to really understand. I mean, ultimately, what it is, it's about a million tiny so little decisions. Yes or no, all the time. Yes, sir, it's yeah. a million yes or no decisions. So we just and split we, up the amount of yeses and nos to say, and then we say, you know, yeah. that's pretty much it. Yeah. Story. Story. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, we do, I mean, we do have sometimes, like, divided um, duties, but, uh, but it's always after a very long conversation about how we're going to be doing them. And most of the time we don't get to divide duties, most of the time we're doing it all together, which yeah. is nice, it's like having four arms. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's great. We're, we're hoping that on, uh, not hoping, on the next movie we'll have to wear less hats and, um, but on this one, we were both doing pretty much almost every... every we did a lot of jobs yeah. on this one. <laughs> the next one will be delegating tasks. Yes. That'll feel weird. Yeah, it will. Be nice. Oh, honestly, oh, yeah. absolutely. It's one of the most fun parts. And, and, and I think we, we both share the opinion that you know, in 2012, the term filmmaker and the term director, what it really means is, I mean, if, if you want to be, have some success at it and be able to do it as a living, that means also that you do the promotion stuff. You do everything you possibly yeah. can. You know, you, we don't, I think there are very few filmmakers today that have the luxury of being like, well, I'm a director. Right. That's what I do, that's all I do. I go to set and people will say some things, right. and then, uh, no, you have to do like, most people now, you have to do a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I think that the promotional part, it's part of being a director. We used to think that, actually. We used to think that our movie would be, would be uh, polarizing. We would think that some audiences would love it and they wouldn't know how to, where to, what box to put it in, that kind of thing. And honestly, it, it it's turned out that they seem to they seem to enjoy it a lot, just kind of for what it is. It seems like for the most part they they're not allowing the sensibilities of other large movies or you know uh, movies that fit more solidly into one genre um, to affect their judgment on this one, which is really fortunate, and uh, yeah, no, we've been amazed by it. It's really cool. And then just generally, Aaron and I as filmmakers. We, while we always try to be unique and we hope to remain being unique and, and telling new interesting stories, I think that we ultimately do, in our own strange way, have very mainstream sensibilities. Um, so even when we're doing ultra low budget shoestring movie, we, it, it seems so far that, that uh, that, that it connects with a very, a very large audience, right? We and do think about our, we do I'm think about our audience, you know, as, uh, of, uh, in terms of like, I mean, normally the audience members are people like uh, we would, we with people with similar tastes to us is like so it's like well what are we gonna love to watch, you know? But we do, you know, we do keep in mind like, when this happens, I hope the theater breaks out in applause, you know, stuff like that. It's not like this is our movie, 
and if you like it, you like it, but otherwise, I don't care. No, it's not like that. We we like we love so. sharing it, and I think the audiences respond to that. You know. Well, that's it's it's strange because I've it's a it, it, the question that question has been asked before in in general, not not in interviews, but you know, it's like, do you make movies for yourself or do you make them for your audience? And it's like I would be oh. sitting in the audience. You know, like I would, I am my, I, I am the audience, you know, like, and you know, I, I want to make movies that everyone wants to watch and I want to movie, watch movies that everyone wants to watch, you know? So yeah, it's, it's kind of a strange question, uh, uh, that, that has a pretty simple answer. Well, Aaron really didn't want those two guys. He really did it, and I had Bought to really fight. Forever. I, I had to fight for it to have them. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you I want to cast me and you, Justin. I was yeah. like, Justin, we can do this. We shot a version of the movie that was just him and I. But yeah. The cult member scene was like really hard to shoot because we had yeah. to act against ourselves. I'm totally, I'm totally, joking. totally joking. Sorry. No, there's uh, Sorry. the uh, the the two leads we had directed in a really low budget beer commercial, and it went really well. And they're brilliant in the movie, both of them. And I mean, we got so, 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 so lucky. Everyone else, we we cast um, via via auditions in Los Angeles, and we found them. Uh, Bill O'Bush Jr., the the French guy, right? Uh, Aaron has a good story about him. If you want to tell it for the billion time, yeah, I will. I will. Yeah, Bill. Uh, Bill came into the audition after. A bunch of very good, very good auditions for that character. Um, but he walked in the room with the entire scene memorized, all six pages of an, almost a monologue. I mean, that is already that's above and beyond. That's that's incredible. Uh, but he came in with it memorized, with the accent, and more or less performed it exactly as you saw on screen right there. And um, and we found out later that we know him from some other productions just by complete coincidence. But when we were doing the audition, we had no idea that we knew him. But I'd, I'd shot a movie for a director who had directed him in the last movie. He got an award presented by Bill to him, you know. Uh, Bill presented him an award for another film that he and I had worked on. Um, and then, so it was one of those things like, yeah, it's got to be Bill. And then, he's, I mean, just just look at his... Look at his resume, he's, you know. Yeah. And, you know, he's got such an intensity. You know, so. We uh, we were so proud that we had cast Bill in this uh, sort of like chatty, odd role that he typically. It's not the type of stuff he typically does, and and. Um, so we've been calling him up with all the good news, like, oh, we're getting, we're in all these festivals, we're in such a great time, people seem to really love the movie, and um, we thought he'd be really excited about it, and he probably is. No, no, he, but we also, he is he excited. Is, no, he's, he's excited, so cool and he's, wonder, he's a wonderful guy, beyond wonderful. Um, but I do think that there's, like, a level of, like, okay, great guys, and then, like, but the movie where he's killing a hooker with a tire iron, I he think, he, I think, I think <laughs> he's like, oh. I think that's the thing. Yeah, I think, <laughs> like, I think, I think he's, he's just totally so, disappointed. Him. He's so comfortable with blood on him, and like, and like, totally let you him know down. what I mean? Yeah, totally let him down. Our ne- we're trying. We we, uh, we our next movie our has next a lot movie, more blood. We gotta and, we gotta get some we, blood on him. We yeah. will get some blood on him. It's awesome. Your your next movies, uh, your first your project is horror movies on. Uh, or they are. Different? They're horror movies as much as resolutions are horror movies. So okay. yes, uh, they are genre bending. You know, kind of horror but they're funny with character drama and sci-fi and uh, action actually and one yeah. of them one's, a, one's kind of an action movie too so yeah it's kind of all over the place yeah we we um you asked if it's horror and you know we'll, we'll wear the horror badge proudly horror movies are, are wonderful but we never discuss what genre there's never any intent to stay in any genre uh it just sort of works out that way and and um and uh, even though we wear that badge proudly, we also don't want to to give a poor expectation of what people are getting themselves into when they go see our movies. One of our next movies is a romance. <laughs> <laughs> it's a romance. It is. It's, it's a romance. A romance yeah. It's a romance with monsters. Uh huh. There's monsters. Uh. And then. Uh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chris. Chris, it's Michael. Can I come up? Who? I'm your best friend. Sorry, man. You can fix it.
<laughs> oh God, there's no, do you remember? I don't think I could fix that. Well, all right. Really? Yeah. You're leaving? Fuck you, Mike! Are you fucking kidding me? All I'm asking is that you get clean for one week. Do you think someone's leaving these stories for us to find? Maybe you have uh, split personalities and you're leaving each other gifts and shit. A lot of drug addicts buried in these hills. I'm trying to tell you, man, someone's fucking following us. What's happening, Mike? I think it wants a story. It's like a little story. It's a little story. It's a little story. Each one has a beginning, middle,